Hi, I'm Donna and this is Charlotte and we're Pims and Needles. Um, we're a community interest group. Um, we specialise in groups for women of all ages that come along and learn some heritage skills in a fun and friendly environment. So we've um, been lucky enough to gain some funding from the Arts Council from their Let's Create Jubilee Fund um, to allow us to do some Jubilee projects um, at different parts of the region and engage lots of different age groups um, within our project. So we've got a lovely Jubilee quilt project coming up, we've got a really um, exciting decade bunting project and some lovely um, live workshops that are going to take place in Darlington Town Centre over the Jubilee um, bank holiday weekend. So today we wanted to talk to you about our bunting project. Um, this, um, if you're seeing this video it means that you've been successful in being chosen to, to do a decade's worth of bunting. So the type of bunting we're going to be making is a square flag type. And this isn't quite square, but it's <laughs> rectangular. Uh, but you might have seen this before. And this is the kind of um, bunting that you would use to decorate if you were having a jubilee party or a street party. Um, and we're hoping to make 70 metres of this bunting. Um, so it's quite a big challenge for us. <laughs> so your community organisation or group or school um, will have been given a decade already. Uh, we have a separate video which you can watch which gives you some ideas about what happened in those decades whether it's a new story you wanted to focus on, a film, some music um, there's loads of different inspiration. We want you to make your square um, about something that happened within that decade. And we're hoping that when we string all of these together and we stitch them up, we've got a really um, exciting kind of timeline that runs right through um, the beginning of the, the Queen's reign all the way right up to present day. So every group is going to be sent um, a box of equipment like this. So we've got some um, fabric. So you, you, you will receive your squares. So the squares are going to be 20 by 20 centimetres each. So they'll all be pre-cut ready for you. So you don't need to cut any fabric. Um, so you'll get your squares and you'll also have a selection of fabrics in different colours in here that you can use to apply onto the squares, cut up, um, applique, do all kinds of different things with. We've got some fabric paints so you might want to do something really textile -y, or you might want to just get your hands dirty and do some painting. Um, so we've got a selection of brushes, um, we've got some fabric paints, we've got um, some fabric pens and we also have included some hobby knives. Now it might be that you want to um, make a template and actually do some paper cutting and make a stencil where you can paint over your stencil. We'll go through these different techniques with you but that's something else that's included in the box. We've also got some sewing equipment in here as well so we've got some embroidery hoops to use there and we've got a pack of needles um, we've got some embroidery threads in here in a selection of colours there and some um, nice sharp embroidery scissors for you to use as well um, and some bond web so this is just a really easy way we're going to show you how to use this to um, apply these bits of fabric so to create a design and put it onto your square um, you just need an iron and an ironing board um, to use that as well uh, so it, it's going to really bring in lots of different sewing and textile techniques as well some great contents in the box, so um, now we're going to go through the demonstrations and give you some ideas about how you can use them. So I'm going to show you how to do some embroidery stitches now. So if you fancy having a go and doing some stitching, some embroidery with your group, um, then I'm going to give you some simple stitches that you'll be able to create quite a lot um, of your design with on your bunting square. So I've got some samples to show you. Um, so these are just um, in embroidery hoops here um, and some of the stitches on here are just very simple so we've got like a back stitch on here we have got some little roses which are a little bit more complex on here but you can create quite an interesting design with text um, and sort of simple stitches like satin stitch and just just using a, a couple of different stitches and a couple of different coloured threads this was one that we actually um, created for the VE Day celebrations which happened during Covid um, and this was a little teacup design again just with a back stitch and some satin stitch in there as well and that looks really effective. This one's a little bit more sort of built up so you've got some of those basic stitches but then you've got more uh, sort of dense areas here of embroidery and you've got a little bit of ribbon on top as well and some metallic threads um, just to add a little bit more kind of texture into them and we're more than happy for you to bring in some other threads if you want to and ribbon and things like that so please feel free 
free to kind of make these really experimental and creative. And this one is um, a little bit more of kind of like a free stitching sort of technique. So it's a, a little portrait here, but we've got lots of kind of um, simple stitches like running stitch, but also these stitches which are kind of a little bit more organic, if you like, to create the sort of hair effect on here. Uh, so if you want to make up some of your own stitches as well, that's totally fine by us. Um, we just really like to see it being really, really creative. So what I've got here is an embroidery hoop and you've got some of these in your kit and I've got my bunting square here inside the embroidery hoop. So this just keeps it nice and taut and makes it much easier for you to stitch onto. So I'm going to show you a running stitch and a back stitch just so you can see how those simple stitches work and then I'm going to show you a satin stitch as well. I've threaded my needle up here and I would always recommend working with just an arm's length of thread so don't create these really long kind of washing lines because it's really really difficult to um, sew with and I've popped um, a knot in the end as well just to stop the needle from coming stop the thread from coming through the fabric. You might want to double thread your needles and pop a knot in the end if you're working with a class of children just so that the needles don't keep coming unthreaded. So I'm going to come up through the fabric from underneath just until I feel that knot and um, hit the fabric there and with a running stitch this is just a really simple stitch so I'm going to make the stitch and I'm going to pull that through and then the idea is that the gap is just of a similar size to your stitch so we keep these quite equal so we're going to go down through the fabric and then leave a gap and come up and then go down through the fabric so it's just this up down kind of motion um, I've got these stitches quite big you might want to make them smaller and once you get confident you can do that so you can make the stitches much smaller if you want to We've put um, embroidery needles in your packs as well, so they've got nice big eyes for you to thread the needle, to, for you to thread the threads through. In your kits, you've got um, some stranded cotton threads as well, so they're more like these ones. So you can use these as they are, so they're, they're quite thick, but just for ease, you could just thread them through the needles, or you can split these down. So there's um, six skeins on here, so you can actually open them up and split them down, just so that you're working with two or three of the skeins rather than the whole thickness. If you want to bring in some of your own threads as well, that's completely fine. As we said, metallic threads and things like that would work as well. And then a back stitch. So I'm just gonna start my line over here. So the way that I think about this is that I'm going to stitch back towards myself. So I'm going to make the first stitch backwards and then I'm going to leave a gap and then I'm going to fill that gap in. So back towards myself, fill that in and then leave a gap again, stitch back towards myself to fill that gap in. So this creates a continuous line of stitching. So this is really nice for kind of outlining anything. Um, it's just kind of almost like you're drawing with a needle and thread. The last one that I'm gonna show you is a satin stitch. So this is um, this kind of stitch here where you can kind of fill in a section. If you want to draw a design, you could use a pencil or you could use um, like an embroidery transfer pen. So these pens actually will um, rinse off with warm water so they dissolve and disappear or some of them just dissolve, just disappear in the air. So I'm going to just fill my shape in here and the satin stitch is just a bit like a colouring in kind of stitch. So we're just going to um, work across this leaf shape and what we're doing is just making sure our stitches are really compact and really close to each other. So I'm just going across, just nice and close. Again, you can change direction with these stitches so if you want to um, do like a flower shape you can make them sort of um, angled a little bit so that they work around a shape and it's just about keeping them really close together so that it blocks in the shape. So three kind of really easy stitches that you, that you can really get going with. Um, you can create some fantastic designs with these. So I hope you enjoy having a go um, at some stitching in your group. Hi there, I wanted to talk to you about the fabric painting. So I've made a couple um, with fabric paints 
um, just things that I was inspired by really. Um, so we can be thinking about music from the decades, we can be thinking about video games. Um, so I just want to show you how I created these. And I've also got some inspiration. So while I was looking for these pieces, I looked online and whether it was going to be rock and roll from the 50s and 60s, Marilyn Monroe, famous person, um, or whether it was um, the moon landing. Um, I've just printed off loads of different ideas. Some of these things lend themselves better to uh, certain ways of painting than others. So the first thing that I would suggest for you to do would be to um, get your fabric and actually stick it down to a solid um, piece. So I'm using a cutting board here. I've actually used um, mats from home. <laughs> These are dinner mats. So the first thing to do is stick your um, fabric down, uh, whether you're going to use a cutting board or something else. And it just gives you a really good surface um, to paint it. So there's a few things you can do to create something like this. You could either draw it freehand, um, you could use a stencil, or you could trace it underneath. Um, so I traced this underneath and then created the background after that. So this is the image that we started off with. Um, if you pop this under your fabric, you'll be able to see the outline under there. So you can trace over that with a pencil and then colour it in from there. Um, the other thing that you can do, uh, which is something um, that we pop the, the things in the box for, is paper cutting. Um, so something like this, if you start cutting out the stencil, so if you can see that I've started cutting this out. So I'd cut out all of the black um, and then I would lay this over the fabric and with a brush, I would actually just dab it on and dab the paint on and that would fill the lines in and that would give you a really nice outline. The other thing that we popped in the box is a stencil. So this again is something that you could use one of the fabric pens or a felt tip and you would be able to um, write an iconic kind of um, sentence or uh, a phrase from an era. So one of the ones that I was thinking about was um, Frankie Says Relax, which is obviously synonymous with the 80s. Um, so what I would do is I would colour that in either with felt tip or with um, a pencil. And then after that, I would go over it again with fabric paints. So that's a really great way to create your strong, bold main impression. Um, when it comes to decorating the outside or decorating the background of your square, um, we've used a few different techniques here. Um, one of the things that I used for this was actually just rolled up little pieces of masking tape or little pieces of paper, where you can have something like that, dip it in your paints and stipple it on. Uh, we've also got some uh, sponges in there, which is brilliant for giving you that colour washed um, sort of surface area. So you can do some mix in there where you're getting all of your paints to run into each other. So for the background here, I also did some um, paint flicking. So I dipped my brush in the paint and then I sort of like flicked it on there to give it that speckled look. So if you're looking for any sort of textures, the more that you play around with it, there's loads of different things that you can do uh, to give your piece some definition and some texture. So one of your other options would be to make this a mixed media piece. So you might start off with your background here, which has got some paint techniques on, and then do some embroidery over the top, because I think that um, if I actually went down Ziggy's little stripe in some embroidery threads, it would really make it pop and bring it to life. So there's no limits with this, whether you want to stick on some pieces of paper, whether you out cut out some magazines, whether you want to um, do some applique. Um, there's loads of things that you can do to really personalize your piece and make it your own. I'm going to show you some applique techniques and some embroidery techniques that you can use um, on your bunting square. Um, you can combine these with some of the stencil techniques, with the fabric paints, and you can make it a mixed media piece if you like. Um, I'm going to show you just a, quite a simple technique um, and then you can take it in your own direction. So I've created some um, samples to show you. Um, this is a, a girl, girl power applique. Um, bunting square that I've created here just using different fabrics and um, cutting out some templates and using the iron to stick these down so I'll show you how to do that in a moment and I've just got some other ideas of applique to show you so these were just some little people that we did um, in a project last year in school so you could have you could have people on your bunting square and um, this is a combination of applique with some beads and embroidery on top of it so just to give you some ideas about how you could kind of keep going and make it a little bit more tactile and textured if you wanted to keep building up the layers in here and um, 
We might have some groups getting involved that actually use sewing machines as well. So this is an applique which has got some machine um, embroidery and stitching on top of it. And it's a little bit more kind of almost collaged on here. So I've got here, um, this is a little template. So this is the 2012 Olympics logo which I've created on here. So I've just um, traced over, so I'm going to use this to work from. The thing that I really need to kind of mention is that if you're going to do anything with numbers or letters on, um, when you're using the bond web, you've got to flip it round the other way um, so that it comes out the right way when we do it. So I'm, I've traced over this in a marker pen. So when I lay it down, so I'm, I'm going to lay it down so that I can see the reverse side of it. That's the side that I'm going to use as the template um, to actually trace over onto my bond web. So if you were using something like um, wooden stencils, as you um, trace around, you need to make sure, sure these are back to front and you'll see how that works in a moment. Um, so I've got a piece of bonder web, so that's this stuff that we've got here in the box and I've just cut a small square of it and on one side you'll see that it's like um, a tracing paper and the other side it's a little bit more textured and this is the side that's got the glue on and um, which is going to heat up and melt in a minute um, when I use the iron. So we want to trace onto the paper side. So I've drawn the design there and what I'm going to do then is take my piece of fabric so I'm going to put this onto a red piece of fabric so that my um, 2012 logo is going to be red. Um, so I'm just going to put this with the rough side, so the, the, the gluey side, down onto the back of the fabric. I'm going to use an iron to stick this down. So you've got that bonded now onto here and then I'm just really quickly going to cut out these numbers. So I've cut out all of my shapes now, so what I need to do is remove this backing um, paper here. So this is the trickiest part of it, because um, sometimes it's quite difficult to sort of find the edge of it and flick it up. So if you can't find it, what I tend to say is just almost if you sort of, it's like you're starting to rip it, it'll come up and you'll be able to grab hold of it and then you just want to be able to peel that whole piece off and you'll see that it's transferred the bond web onto the back of here. It's not really sticky, but you can feel that the film has been transferred onto there. And I've positioned them where I want them on my um, fabric square and they're the right way around now. So all I need to do is just use the iron again to just um, iron over these and that's actually going to melt the glue and stick them down onto the fabric. So it's just a really, really quick way of creating an applique design. So you can keep, keep going, you can add more layers on top so I could add different sections on top of this if I wanted to build up the design. So I hope you're all really excited about having a go with the bond web to create some applique. Um, you've got two metres of bond web for your group in here um, so plenty to create some really exciting designs on your bunton squares. I just wanted to show you the technique of paper cutting. So we've been really fortunate in a lot of our groups where we've had um, Kaylee from KP Paper Cuts that's taught us so well how to do this activity. So we thought this is a really great way for you to be able to uh, make a stencil to be able to make some images on your squares. So I'm just going to show you um, a stencil that I've partly cut out. So we've got kind of wobbly bits. So I'm hoping that these all fall out. So what I'm aiming to do is take off all of the black pieces and then just leave the rest of that as a stencil. So when you're working with one of these knives, um, the craft knives are included in your kit. Um, what you need to do is just make sure you always cut away from yourself. Um, the, thing, the other thing that's really important to do is to turn the piece. So don't sort of turn your hand into a, a funny position to get the cut. Just make sure that you turn the paper. You don't have to really press down. It, it, you can feel it going through, um, but it doesn't have to be a really big stab in motion. So I'm still busy cutting, but what I'm gonna do, just to show you how this works, is I'm gonna hopefully pull out a little piece here. So what we're gonna do is get quite a thick brush and we're gonna um, stipple this design on. just get really splodgy. We can neaten up the corners afterwards with a finer brush. 
Um, on top of the fabric paints, you could do some embroidery. You could even layer these paints. They're really quite good for, um, so even if you're doing something in black, the white will go over the top once it's dried. As you can see there, that's the start of the design. So if you're using something like this, a paper cut stencil, they're not going to last forever because they're a bit flimsy on paper, but you might want to try it on cardboard if you are cutting these out for children. But it does give you that really good outline and a starting point for which to build more onto your design. Thanks for watching our tutorial. Hope you've picked up some new skills there. Uh, we're really excited to see what you're going to make with these squares. We absolutely can't wait for you to send them back to us. Um, we'll be giving you some more information about where to send them and deadlines, but we can't wait to get them back. And then we'll be um, stitching them into the bunting or the quilt, and they'll be going on display in the um, Market Square in Darlington over the Jubilee weekend. So we'll send more details about that soon as well. If you've got any um, queries in the meantime, please feel free to drop us an email. It's hello at pinsandneedles.co.uk. And um, if we don't hear from you, we look forward to receiving your finished work soon. And be creative. Have lots of fun while you're making these fantastic bunting squares. <laughs>